Welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church's Turning Point Broadcast with Minister Marty Ringer. At St. Mark, we're growing with purpose, extending Jesus to all people, all the time. And we want to motivate you spiritually based on biblical principles. You're welcome to join us for Sunday service each week at 11 a.m. and for weekly Bible study every Wednesday evening starting at 6 p.m. We hope you enjoy today's message. Today's message comes from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, which reads, There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. We can do a little bit more of that. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You know, holy, holy, holy. I am, you know, I am, I am overjoyed to be back in the house of the Lord. You know, this is another beautiful sunny Sunday. It's a sunny Sunday with a little overcast, but we're going to get right into the, the, the sermon of the day. Because, you know, I, I feel good. You know, I was had a nice little trip, vacation in a sense of studying and uh, learned a lot of new things and new concepts. And uh, I am thankful for y'all prayers and I am thankful for safe travel, too. But uh, we're going to get right into the lesson, so pray with me if you please. Lord God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Your name is always holy and you always are the sun of our life, the sunshine of our life, Lord God. Lord God, and I thank you for allowing us to make it through another week to come into your household to hear more of you, Lord God. Lord God, help us to understand that agape love, Lord God. Lord God, Help us to get closer to you and show the love as we lift you up. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight to speak to your people in your holy name. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I'm kind of going back to a style that I used to do or something that I used to do because it's something I, I, I really want us to embrace in ourselves. So this statement today, I need you to repeat after me. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Allow me to reintroduce myself. All right, so we're going to do that again. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Last time, allow me to reintroduce myself. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Now, if you, depending on what generation you grew up in, you might think about a guy named Jay-Z having a song out like that. But at the same time, we're talking about the scripture lesson where we're talking about being born again. We're talking about being born and rebirthed through water and through spirit. 
But let's kind of break this down because this is another longer scripture that sometimes people recite this all the time, but really, do they really understand what they're talking about? Because they love to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whoever believeth in him may have eternal life. And how many of us actually live through that statement? How many of us actually understand the whole concept of why that was being said? You see, there was a man named Nicodemus who was a Pharisee. He had power. But he was, in a sense, on the other side of the line. He wasn't really a, a, a disciple of Jesus. But in the scripture, he kind of, he, he believed in Jesus. Because he already came to him and said, I know that you have to be from God. From the things that you have been doing and the signs that we see, we know that you have to be sent from above. And Jesus explains to him that for you to have a new spirit and a new life, you need to be born again. Now, I want us to understand the concept, in a sense, of being born again. Being born again, especially in spirit, is in a sense changing your previous life into a new life. In a sense, a turning point. A turning point that says, what I used to do, I need to make a turning point. Because I've been going on this pathway, and I'm going to continue going on this pathway until I reach a turning point. You know, I got off the airplane yesterday, and I got picked up. And leaving from the airport, I had a decision to make. I could either go on Camp Creek Parkway, or I could go on Loop Road. And see, sometimes in our lives, we get on Loop Road that just circles around and around and around. We're going, we're moving, but we ain't going nowhere. And we're doing the same routines. And see, after a while, if you don't make a turning point, you're going to run out of gas. And some of us, you know, we, we, we muster up enough nerve to make a turning point. And we muster up enough nerve that one time to make a turning point to get on 285. And now we just at a longer loop. We continuously go on this loop. And Jesus is telling us that at some point, you need to make a change. Your spirit needs to make a change. A constant a conscious turning point. You see, a lot of us deal with turning points not because we decided to make it, but somebody else decided to make it for us. When you lose your job, that's a turning point. When someone passes in your life, that's a turning point. This is a graduation season. And a lot of graduates now are at a turning point. They got to decide, am I going to go to college, go to the military, or sit on mama's couch? These are turning points. Right now, I'm asking you to ask yourself, what in your life do you need to turn? You know, sometimes we need encouragement to be turned. You can call it manipulation by certain people, but sometimes you need positive reinforcement. God didn't give us that spirit of slavery, like you just said. Amen. But thinking about slavery and turning points, if Harriet Tubman didn't have positive reinforcement, there's a lot of people that still would have been on loop road. Amen. Because, see, there's so many stories about Slaves, and she's trying to move them to one place, and they're sitting there, and they're tired, and she says, it's time to move. Get up. And they say, 
I'm tired. I can't do it. Harriet said, I said, get up and move. I said, no, I can't, I can't get off loop floor. I can't, I can't do it. Harriet said, get up and move or die. They start singing, you got to move, <laughs> you got to move. But that's positive motivation, and a lot of us need sometimes that positive motivation because if not, if not, you will stay in that same place. God sometimes put people in your life to get you off loop road. Because see, once you make that first step off of loop road, sometimes aspect of your life changes. And that's why sometimes when people saw who you used to be and their viewpoint of you where it used to be, you got to say, let me reintroduce myself real quick. Because I'm born again in different aspects of my life. Let me reintroduce myself. Because at some point, I made a conscious, conscious effort for a turning point. If I keep doing the things that I've always done, I will only get to where I've always been at. If I don't ever get out the box. Jesus is telling Nicodemus, and I want y'all to really understand this because he brings into light really a sense of changing and changing your fear and your aspects of fear. See, you can't, you can't run from fear. Fear keeps you on loop road. Fear is a false evidence that appears real because you make up a reality in your mind that is not real. Fear will hold you in your house. Fear will always have you on that front step. Fear will have you stuck in a ditch. But you know, fear is a part of life. You know, I, I'm thinking of, in a sense, when the disciples were on the boat, when Jesus said, let's go to the other side, and he's laying on the boat, and Jesus is taking a nap, and the winds and everything are hitting the boat, and the water and everything is hitting the boat, and they're in fear. And let me ask you this. How many times in your life you experienced a sleeping Jesus. One where the trials and tribulations are going crazy and you're like, do you not even care that we're about to die? And you're experiencing a sleeping Jesus. Not an absent Jesus, but a sleeping Jesus. And he kind of asked the question, you with little fear. I mean, you of little faith. But fear is a part of life. But that's why he referenced this as just like in the wilderness when Moses had to raise up the serpent. If you're not understanding the whole concept of the connection, there was at a time where the, 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 the people around Moses, the Israelites, were getting bitten by snakes. They were being, snakes was all over the place. They were getting bitten, and a lot of them was dying. You know, it's funny, they don't really classify what kind of snakes they were. They might have been garden snakes that aren't poisonous, but being killed but dying because they're almost killing themselves because of that fear oh I'm bitten oh my god I'm going to die oh Jesus you know it, it. he said okay look you got more authority over that snake 
you got more authority Amen. over your fears. Amen. But since you can't believe that, Amen. let me construct something that you can believe in. So they made this, this, this snake and said, okay, if you get bitten by that snake, and if you look at this snake, you'll be healed. If you face your fear, you'll be healed. Jesus was saying the same thing. He said, just like that serpent had to be lifted up, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Because you can't believe in the power inside of you. So you need to look to the cross. Look to the Son of Man. So you can have the power. Once you realize the power that you possess inside of you, you reach a turning point. You reach a turning point that, and turning points, understand, sometimes your turning points are at your worst times in your life. Your turning points are in your storms, in that rain. Because see, understand this, if it never storms and it never rains, you would definitely have a drought. Amen. <laughs> storms and rains bring change. You always got to go through something to change you to be a better person. So it's like, don't run from the storm. Don't run from that change. Like, you know, for the longest, Jonah ran from his destiny. And everything that Jonah was going through, it was trials and tribulations. And he even tried to run and jump on a boat trying to run from God. And God started affecting the whole boat. And the people around him on the boat was like, wait a minute, something's going to have to give. You bad. We're going to throw you and your unwillingness to do what God say off the boat. And he got swallowed by a whale. And got put into a waiting period. An incubator kind of period. To say, okay, you've been running, and you've been running on a loop. So now let me put you into a lower place so you can start getting a more relationship with me. And once he started praying again, once he started saying, okay, I do need to make this turning point. I need to do what God said. <clears throat> and then the well spit him out. And, you know, he started on that new path. <clears throat> Paul had a turning point. Paul had a turning point where a man that wrote majority of the New Testament, who was a man that was prosecuting, going after all Christians, ready to kill all of them, but had a turning point when he encountered Jesus. And it changed his life. And I want, you to, I want you to understand this too. When you start working for Christ, when you say, my turning point is going to go a new direction. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for Christ. Now, I, don't, I can't quote the scripture all the time. I might not be able to say the right things. I want you to understand something. Paul never quoted Jesus. Paul never quoted scripture. Amen. Throughout everything that he did, he built churches after churches. He had one of those, I'm a ride or die. I'm going to go spread the gospel. And I might not be the most educated in the gospel, but I'm going to do what God said do. Amen. Because if I go, he's going to go with me. Paul had a turning point. So I'm asking you, isn't it time for a turning point? Because see, I'm realizing in my life, I've had a turning point. See, four years ago, I wasn't this person. Four years ago, I was a totally different person. Yeah, y'all laugh because most of y'all know this was not me some years ago. 
But God purposely put some turning points in my life. And see, here's the thing. Four or five years ago, I wasn't as happy as I am now. Because once I started making that turning point and going more to where Christ was at, he's given me more confidence. He's given me more pride in myself. He's given me more understanding of my purpose that this church is going into a turning point. I need us to understand this. It's a turning point. What we used to be ain't where we going to be. Because if you know whose you are, you will know who you will become. If you visualize and communicate with them, you know you're on the right path, going the right direction. And see, you can't focus on who I used to be. Amen. When Harriet was freeing the slaves, they can't think about, well, I used to always be the slave. You're going to freedom. No, 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 I'm always a slave. No, you're a free person. Don't sign your life up to Loop Road. When you get off Loop Road, still don't get stuck on 285. We're going in a new direction. A new direction. And I got to be honest with you. <laughs> Let me reintroduce myself. We hope you enjoyed today's message and invite you to come join us in person. We're located at 4137 Washington Road in East Point, Georgia. Our Sunday services start at 11 a.m. and our weekly Bible study is at 6 p.m. on Wednesday evenings. Minister Marty Ringer and the rest of the St. Mark family look forward to meeting you.